Thomas as mayor. He has demonstrated time and again his great friendship to our community, fighting to deliver more resources and services to our children, working to protect our religious liberties, always making himself accessible to us whenever the need arises. And if that is the chapter he has already written, just imagine what he will continue to do in the months and years ahead for our yeshiva parents, for our special needs children, for our future in this great city. And therefore, it is with a great personal pleasure, please join us in welcoming my dear friend, a dear friend of Abu Yisra, our mayor, the Honorable Bill de Blasio.
because what it says to me is stand up for what's right for the community, ask of, demand of government things you deserve. We're trying to show you with these efforts on pre-K and after school that we're listening and we're trying to answer that call. But there's some other dangers out there and we're all the time and you have a right to demand of your city government, in fact, of all levels of government, that they respond. The danger of anti-Semitism works always. I don't need to say it in this room, but it's important that I do say it in this room. It works out there, it works all over the world. You know, we always would have thought that our friends in Europe would have learned something, but all over Western Europe, anti-Semitism is too alive and well. Intolerance of so many kinds are too alive and well. Here, in this country, the recent incidents in Kansas were such a stark reminder. There's so much work to be done. In this city, the anti-Semitic graffiti in Brooklyn in recent weeks reminds us people have to be taught, they have to be educated, tolerance has to be taught, understanding has to be taught, and when that's not enough, our law enforcement personnel will do their job. They will make sure that any perpetrator is found. That's how we send the message that intolerance against the Jewish community will not be accepted. And I have a different vantage point over these last five months. I get constant reports on the security dynamics of our city. And I can tell you that Commissioner Bratton and Chief Banks and all the men and women of the NYPD are working hard every day to protect us that whenever they sense even the possibility of a threat against the Jewish community, swing into action in ways we see and in ways that we don't see. But it's so extraordinary how consistent the efforts are of the NYPD to protect all of us, to guard us against the threat of terror, to guard us against intolerance and bias, violence. And it's a reminder also, vigilance is something we exercise in our everyday lives here, and vigilance is called for in defense of some place we love deeply, which is the state of Israel. <laughs> the city on this earth with the largest Jewish population. It is a true honor. It comes with an obligation to protect that population here. But it also gives me an instantaneous link to the state of Israel, a link that's been furthered by my visits there, and a sense that it is part of what I do to defend the state of Israel. The state of Israel does not have enough defenders in the world. I am honored to count myself among the number of those who are all in the I'll finish with a quote, as I love this quote. I've been doing my research. Rabbi Nachman of Breslov. <laughs> taking lessons on the side. He said, if you are not a better person tomorrow than you are today, what need have you for a tomorrow? It's a beautiful thought, powerful thought. It's something that all of us should think about in our personal life. But I think about it in terms of a good Israel and this extraordinary history. 92 years. I've been honored to be a part of the journey for the last dozen or so years, and I can safely say you are getting better all the time. You're earning that tomorrow, and muscle talk. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, dear friends, please join the main court. The program will resume in a few minutes.